Okay. Okay, cool. So the very first thing we did with the question was we underlined significance and the murder of Macduff's household. Awesome. Before I share some of the ideas of how I would approach this question, I want to hear from my class here. Yeah, will you just give me one of your reasons of why um, it is significant? Because when Macduff was crying about his family dying, it shows like going against general and against nice it shows Macduff's emotions we're linking that to gender norms very cool maybe you had that maybe you didn't consider it and I think it's a really valid point why else is the murder of Macduff's family significant yep it ultimately led to um, Macduff's downfall does it lead to his downfall cool yeah that's cool. Leads to Macbeth's downfall. I agree with you, Anna. It really is him going that just that bit too far. Of course. Um, it shows, I guess, how the weird sisters like weren't affected Macbeth and how like ruthless he's become now. Thank and you. How he just like murdered a whole family of like different people. Excellent. Okay, so we've got Amber saying that it shows. Can I say just the power of the witches? because they of course said beware Macduff. They didn't say beware Macduff and his wife and small child or kids. So um, Amber said a great word there, which is one of my points. It shows Macbeth's, I love this word. It shows Macbeth's ruthlessness. He is becoming more bloodthirsty and violent as the play goes on, even if he's not committing the acts himself, he has instructed his murderers to go and do it for him. Yeah. It kind of summarizes how he like reigned over Scotland as a whole with, with always trying to, to, to like kill his, his um, what he perceived as threats and like moving forward with blood always. It shows Macbeth's desire to, um, how can I say that, Frodo? Desire to. Kind of, I don't know. Can we say minimize cool. threats? Yeah, yeah. That'll do for now. Oh, that's great. We're going to put in brackets paranoia. Awesome. Yeah, we've got two more. Yep, I'll go Lucy first. Um, I don't know if this could be one, but how he's like, like kind of jealous of Macduff's family, maybe? Excellent. We could easily do a paragraph. Um, that it shows Macbeth's jealousy. What's one of the key things he's jealous of with Macduff? The, the fact that he has children, male heirs, particularly sons. Yep. It doesn't mean we'll use all of these. We're just showing ourselves that we do have a number of things to talk about here. Hella had one. He did. But then I feel like, so he doesn't get more ruthless, he gets less powerful, you know? Like, it's not a play who awesome. Gonna, like, kill the whole man. That depends, of course, on your interpretation, Pella, for sure. That's a valid interpretation for me. I feel because she's female and the child, they're both incredibly vulnerable, I do feel it marks a change in who he's killing. So I am going to just say there, Pella, to summarise that little combo. Remember, guys, that we have to have complex ideas to talk about. So Pella's added some complexity to that. We were saying, yeah, he's always been ruthless, of course. The play, of course, opens with a description of Macbeth and his brilliant fighting skills, cutting someone from the nave to the chaps, slicing them completely open. He doesn't sweat it. He's not unnerved by blood at the beginning, is he? It's really only after the regicide that he becomes totally spooked by blood and yet wanting more of it. So for me, I do feel that he does transform to become less anguished and more committed to the desire to minimize those threats. It would have been shocking, again, our favorite phrase, it would have been shocking for a Jacobean audience to see the death of innocent children and a wife who's been left vulnerable. So one that is going to be part of my thesis. 
Macduff's desire for revenge. I feel it's what pushes him over. I mean, he's already wants to kill Macbeth, uh, Macbeth but now he really, really wants to kill Macbeth because it's personal now too. It's not just about saving Scotland. It's now this man has literally slaughtered my family. Yeah. Especially after Malcolm tells him to like change his emotions into anger and aggression for the war and stuff. Abso Absolutely. So Amber's got some evidence to use there. She's remembered that Malcolm tells Macduff, put your anger into, through your sword, I think is the quote, channel your grief into the battlefield. He says, dispute it like a man, is the exact quote, I believe. And he, of course, says, yeah, but let me feel it like a man too. So he becomes quite driven by grief and and rage i would suggest one last one because we're running out of space here's a key one that will form my uh, thesis as well it is this okay it prompts audiences to consider loyalty and Patriotism. Can anyone remember what patriotism is? We haven't talked about this a lot. Yeah. Like love or dedication to country. Beautiful. So love or dedication to country. Guys, Shakespeare could have glossed over this scene. It's a short scene. Okay. We don't see the murders because classically Shakespeare would never... Um, deaths on stage, logistically, you wouldn't often see them. They'd happen off stage. So we really just find out that the whole family's been murdered after the fact. However, Shakespeare has chosen to have a short scene where there is dialogue between mum and son. This is a really, it actually really is a significant scene. Because you might remember that the son says, like, mum, is dad a traitor? To which she says, yeah, he is. Because he has chosen... Scotland and the monarchy over protecting his family. The three ideas I did, and I literally drew it like this. I said that it prompts audiences to think about loyalty and patriotism. One is I said that it shows Macbeth's ruthlessness I'm going to do a paragraph on that and really fast this the third one as i hinted in the other uh video was that it fuels mcduff's revenge desire for revenge okay so then i went straight down to these three you want to follow the order so in fact my thesis statement i won't write it it could sound something like Again, use the words from the question. The murder of Macduff's household in the play is a significant event because it prompts audiences to contemplate values about loyalty and patriotism. And it also fuels, uh, it also contributes to, demonstrates Macbeth's increasing ruthlessness. Full stop, you can keep going. Additionally, the murder of the household fuels Macduff's desire for revenge. Cool. So that's my thesis, plus it's my preview points of what these will be about. Okay. I'm also going in the order of the play. Although perhaps I should start with that, technically, because it's that first and then it's the murders. That can come later. We've got a question. The son asks, uh, was he a traitor? Just go behind, you're good. And this, the thing I'm doing in my notes is collecting quotes quickly from my head as I go. Get this. I wonder if you remember this. Maybe you don't. It's, it's quite hard right now. She says that even the poor wren, wren is a bird, a little tiny bird, even the poor wren will fight against the owl. Okay, so even the poor wren will fight against the owl. 
So with some of my evidence here, what literary device could I talk about in that evidence? Motif. Motif, what is the motif there? Birds, Birds yeah, awesome. Bird motif. I'll take imagery too. I'll even take symbolism there. The owl is a symbol of a um, bird of prey. Excellent. Some other, other evidence I have here, this is a really important conversation. She's uh, He has asked, is he dead? And she says, yes, he's dead because she's so angry that he left them vulnerable. Can anyone remember a weird play on words about fathers? Fired with paradox for now, yeah. Cool, number two, I'm gonna go nice and fast. We've got, what's the topic of number two? The ruthlessness. I wonder, does anyone have a quote off the top of their head to talk about Macbeth's ruthlessness? Mask on. Yes. I'm gonna talk about blood here and there's a really good quote that I like. We're talking about the transformation from being brave and noble to becoming, what do, what do people describe him as later? A tyrant, yeah, awesome. So he starts brave and honorable, but he becomes, as Eve has said, he becomes a tyrant. What else does he get called when he's lost it? He's become horrible. We've been here before, guys. A hell. Hell kite. Also, Guys, he gets called a butcher. I checked that this, uh, this morning. He gets called a butcher. Do you notice how some of my quotes and evidence are literally just single words? So thus we see his transformation into absolute ruthlessness. Blood, great quote. He says, I'm in blood stepped in so far that it would be tedious to go back. I've come this far with all my nastiness. I might as well keep going because I can't really get back there because I'm in blood stepped so far. So to be stepped in blood up to a significant part of your body, we see it again, the blood motif. There's no going back. Finally, I've got Macduff's desire for revenge. Off the top of our heads, what are some evidence I could use to support this? Some quotes or things? We have said bird motif up here. I wonder if we can carry on that bird motif down here. Give me a word or a quote. I'm just collecting evidence before I begin. It fuels Macduff's desire for revenge. I'm looking for a quote or a symbol. Yep. Perfect. Thank you, Jasmine. What all my pretty chickens in one fell swoop. Literary devices, again, Shakespeare uses bird imagery too. We did have before dispute it like a man, so I might just quickly put this here. <coughs> dispute it like a man. I love that. So let me stay on that for a sec because I don't want to forget that great point. So Eve is saying down here in this paragraph, we could talk about the fact that I mean, it is inherently, as Eve says, it's a violent act to, re to um, regain order in Scotland. It takes Macduff to what? How does he kill Macbeth in the end? He doesn't punch him in the face, guys. He does a bit more than that. Guys, he beheads him, right? Which, so which was normal for medieval warfare. I know this because I've researched medieval warfare lately. Um, so Eve's making the point that even though it's so to create, to, to get the world back to a good place, we inevitably have to do something that is essentially wrong. We have to cr commit violent acts in order to get things to be good again. I think it goes right back to the opening line of the play. Guys. Fair is foul, foul is fair. This, what, what we think is good is sometimes wrong and vice versa. Awesome, and the last thing I wanna add here is Eve put us, gave us another cool quote or idea for this body paragraph two. 
Macbeth's ruthlessness. Ultimately, we're presented with a character foil here. Macduff is a good man. Macbeth is a bad man. They are foils to each other. For me personally, the interesting stuff comes from this conversation between mum and son because Shakespeare, I mean, I guess the joy of Shakespeare is that it's not an obvious reading. We get to wonder. It's not black and white. Life is not black and white. It's hurly burly. <coughs> fair is foul, foul is fair. Macduff, Macduff gets to finish the play being the hero holding Macbeth's head. But I hope that the audiences went home being like, yeah, but, <laughs> like at what cost did it come? And then we see that in their discussion of what is a traitor? She says to him, it's someone who lies and cheats, I think. And he says, do they all need to be hanged? She says, yeah, all traitors need to be hanged. So therefore, for, by her logic, wouldn't Macduff be hanged too? Right? So obviously we have some pretty complex arguments. Guess what? There's my essay and I'm ready to go.